I've seen Jesus play a flame, lake of fire, and I was standing here. Met the devil in Seattle, spent nine months inside the lion's den. Met Booty yet another time, showed me a glowing light within. But I swear that God is there every time I glare Eyes of my best friend Says my son, it's all been done Someday gonna wake up old and gray So go and try and have some fun Showing warmth to everyone you meet And greet and cheat along the way There's a gateway in our minds that leads somewhere right there, far beyond this plane. Good morning. We're reptile aliens made of life. Good morning. Cut you open and pull out all your pain. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the morning show. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. The setup's different. Very interesting. Here's what's going on in my brain. Keith and Kyle tidied up yesterday. Much appreciated. Much appreciated because I'm a slob. I can't figure out. Here's what's happening in my brain. Good morning. Welcome to the morning show. I'll do the intro and all this. I just need to let you guys know. Uh, hello. Uh, I don't remember if I sit on a chair with armrest or if I sit on a chair that with sans armrest. It, feels, it felt different when I sat down at a chair with no armrest. So I switched it, and I was like, I think my chair got switched. I think I usually have armrests. And now it still feels wrong with armrests. So, you know, there's a lot going on over here. And then I was trying to talk to you, but the volume was down because the settings on the knobs got changed because I, I never touched those because we found the perfect balance. A lot going on. Messing with my head. Periscope still won't work. That's my computer issue. I got updated or something like that. A lot going on. Good morning, everyone. How you doing? Welcome to the morning show. My name's Jimmy. This is uh, the stupidest, most randomest morning show you can listen to, and I appreciate everyone that tunes in and hangs out with me. It's uh, bite-sized bits of everything I enjoy, American towns and their history, baseball players and their story, a book, documentaries on Fridays I've been doing, but I might run out of those. Some suggestions. Um, music, Sturgill Simpson. And you guys can hear me, right? Because also on Wirecast, it usually sent, shows me the volume bar to make sure that you guys have audio coming your way, and it doesn't have that right now. So, out of whack. Out of whack. But good morning to Enrique on Facebook. Al Fox, Todd Father, Vincent... Kraus Souders. Good morning to uh, Drop the Mic, YouTube, Josh Osborne, Norm Shaver, Jill. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Dylan. Good morning, Troy. Good morning, Scott. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing today? Look at the mic show. John Boy Media, we got uh, Talking Baseball voicemail episode. We talked all about unwritten rules. We went through a bunch of unwritten rules, asked Trevor his thoughts on them, and we discussed unwritten rules and some other voicemails. Laughs from the past is a little laughs about the baker on the Titanic who survived um, and drank a little bit. Jake and I had a lot of fun. It's like 20 minutes. If you got 20 minutes, a little like uh, lunchtime listen. Go listen to Little Laughs. Talking Giants, they're still crushing their PPPs. Talking Yanks. Sharp stats. If you're a Yankee fan, you want to get smart. John Boy and Jake Radio will be out today. I'm not sure when because I think we have to do the Talking Yanks pregame show first since it's a day game, then JJR, then Talking Baseball pregame show, then the game will start. Talking Nets and Sequence is out today. Cookie? Jake, you have a cookie for breakfast? Did you have anything else for breakfast? Jake's going sausage and cheese straight to cookie. Um, yeah, I'm not going to eat it yet. 
made by Jenna. Jenna made these. Sturgill. She sent in cookies. Yeah, big Sturgill fan. Do you remember if I had armrests on this chair or not? What? I sat down. There was no armrest. It felt weird. So me and BBD switched it for an armrest chair. It still feels weird. I can't figure out what my chair used to be. Both felt odd. Odd. Both felt odd. Oh, both felt odd. Uh, all right. What's up, everybody? There should be at least one day game every day, especially with no crowd. Yeah. But with less travel and no crowds, they want to get all the TV money they can possibly get. So they're doing night games. Mo money in the nighttime. What's next? We'll just hop in. Jimmy, check out Tyler Childers. Got a country sound, but deaf folk. Yeah, I like I like Childers. I don't like his uh I don't like his new song. It was too country for me. And uh Childers working with um It's working with that producer that I think is gonna overproduce his latest album. So that's just my thinks. Happy birthday to my fiance today, Caitlin. She always makes the thumbnails for these episodes if you're listening. Happy birthday. I already said happy birthday to you when we woke up this morning. Happy birthday again. She's 57 today. It's crazy. Uh, Doug update. He's good. He's good. Doug's is kind of a, uh, he's got a lot of energy. You see uh, my Instagram story yesterday, just a lot of energy. He's running around. Country Squire. Yeah, I think it's that's a song I'm not 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 happy with. I don't care. Uh, I love Zach Bryan. And my fiance's not fifty seven, I guess. I guess some people can't tell what I'm joking, so I have to clarify that. She's seventeen. <laughs> Another lie. Somewhere in the middle. All right. What's going on, everybody? Let's go to the random town of the day. It is maybe Michigan. Maybe. It's maybe Michigan. Maybe it's Michigan. It's 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky in maybe today. Gross. Gross. I'm over the the sun. I want rain. I only want rain to cool down the heat. It's hoodie weather. I'm officially wearing sweatshirts. Uh, All right, maybe Michigan is... Where is it in Michigan, you may find yourself wondering. No one cares. Uh, It's above Ohio. It's kind of by Toledo and uh, south of Detroit, right on Lake. Is that Lake Erie? Yeah, right on Lake Erie. Okay. So above Toledo. Now, why is the, the biggest thing that comes up is Little Brown Jug. That's the biggest place in maybe Michigan, Little Brown Jug. Um, Little Brown Jug. What the hell is Little Brown Jug? Why isn't it the town name? Is that the one store? I mean, we can all agree Little Brown Jug is way too big. I didn't type in Little Brown Jug. I typed in maybe Michigan. Here's maybe Michigan. Maybe it's Michigan. They got a park. They got a cemetery. They got, I mean, we can count the roads on this one, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen streets in maybe Michigan. Only seventeen streets in the town of maybe Michigan. So that's not a lot of streets. And it's also not the age of my fiance. This looks like a nice street, though. Antis Drive. These houses look beautiful. Okay. Let's go down Antis Drive and see if these houses are nice. Okay. Very Michigan. Very, very... Average American town. Look at all this land. They forgot to put a house here. Tiny little house out back. What a nice road. Oh, a little cul-de-sac at the end. Go for a spin. We're spinning. We're spinning. View of the water tower. Usually that's not a good thing. Was that a guy? 
But uh, sometimes water towers are pretty. Oh, yeah. There's a someone. There he is. We found you. We fucking found you, dude. Got him. Uh, okay, let's get out of this street. Nice street in maybe Michigan. Right across from the, the fire department. Oh, these people fenced in their yard? Come on. Maybe they have a vicious dog. Maybe they have a really vicious dog. Maybe the vicious dog likes to go into the drain, and when the drain gets really crowded, it floats away. Okay, so that's we forgive them for fencing in their yard. I mean, clearly, everyone's just trying to be neighborly. Look at this house. This pool seems awfully far away. From the house. This house looks like huge. You think this house is huge? We're on Baldwin Road in maybe Michigan. It's a big old house. Uh, no. I was expecting, expecting to be at more mansion-like. Okay. All right. Let's stop spying on people. Uh, maybe Michigan, maybe Michigan, maybe it's Michigan, maybe it's not. Let's check out the little brown jug, since that seems to be the biggest thing in all of maybe. The little brown jug. Ooh. I like the way this town looks. Here it is. Little brown jug. It's at the main intersection in town. Bar and grill. I guess that's the biggest place. All right. Maybe Michigan doesn't have a lot going on. It was named after Abram Maybe. He built a grist and a sawmill in the 1870s in Maybe, Michigan. Uh, and then they found all the timber. He said, this, this has got a lot of timber here. We're in the middle of the woods. Let's do something with all this tinder. And they, uh, they saw potential for making charcoal. Several kilns were built originally with the town eventually springing up around them. After the timber harvest, the area was settled by immigrants from the Palatinate states of Germany who were instrumental in tilling the land for better drainage. Those industrious Germans coming over, you guys aren't tilling the, this land properly. They fixed them up. Many of their sturdy brick homes built between 1870 and 1900 still are present along farm roads in the area. In 1873, the Canadian Southern Railroad came through here and built a station, which helped stabilize the surrounding economy. It was eventually incorporated as a village in 1899, 110, 90 years before I was born, and remained the same until 2013 when it added a 546-acre parcel north of the village. They have a festival. It's called Maybe Day. There's no specific there's no specific uh thing that happens at the festival. It's just called Maybe Day. Let's check out this baseball field. Maybe Day. Maybe today. Here's the baseball field. Oh, interesting. Foul a ball back onto a gravestone. Got a lot of dead fans watching the Little League game. This is the closest dugout to tombstone ratio I've seen yet. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, we're constantly here on the morning show checking out dugout to tombstone ratios. I think this is the closest we've seen, you know, the dead are always watching. A little bit of a Field of Dreams vibe, but they're on the right field, first base, foul line. Interesting. Okay. Um, how about that? Guess there wasn't a lot of room to not put the Little League field right next to the cemetery. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, looks like they got a quarry. That's awesome. Cool beans. Just to throw rocks at the quarry. Uh, what else about maybe Michigan? Oh, someone stole the sign. Yeah, super into this. Check this out. 
They have this sign. It's it's quite clever. Maybe the best town in Michigan? Maybe the best town in Michigan. Maybe the best town in Michigan? On the back of this sign, it says, maybe you'll come again. Uh, so clever sign. Someone stole this, this article says. Someone stole the sign. They sawed off the bottom of the sign and then carried it away. Probably put it in the back of a truck. Um, and then the sign was just found leaning up against the pole at the former Mobile gas station. So they just returned it. Someone cut down this sign and then just returned it. I'm guessing it was some kids in the area. I feel like sign stealing is a thing that young boys go through. I know in high school, if we were driving around town and saw a sign on the ground, me and my friends usually pick that up. My bedroom in high school was uh, every inch of the wall was covered with a poster. I wonder if I can find a picture of that. And, uh, and yeah, some of those some of those things were uh, found falling off the back of a truck, as they say. We had a we had a big fourth meal Taco Bell window sign. Um, we drove through the drive-through, ordered some Taco Bell. My friend jumped out, peeled it off the Taco Bell window, and then it was in my area. So I don't really condone this. Uh, if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I'd say probably don't steal things off of Taco Bell and, and steal signs and don't be a punk, dumb teenager. But I think my point is I do think sign stealing is is part of young boys' youth. Now, these people took a saw and, like, sawed off the sign. So that's a little different than just picking up a sign that fell um, and then giving it back right away. Jake and I in college once grabbed a street a stop sign or street sign that was fallen and brought it back to the dorm in Maryland. We had uh, a, we were hanging out with our buddies. We were in a frat house, and we brought the sign, and they were like, thanks, now we're going to get in trouble for this. It was kind of like, ah, you guys are right. Sorry about that, but we're going back to Connecticut, so bye. Um. William Shelby says sign stealing was fun in high school. I feel like it's a passage of time, man. It's kind of shitty. Young boys don't have, like, all their brain cells firing. Isn't that just science? I'm trying to see if I can find a picture of my high school bedroom because you guys are so interested. Um... Well, that's a scary picture of me that I don't want to No. So no so far on this page. We also, uh, what other signs did we have? It's a lot of signs, I feel like. Oh, the other thing that we would do, we went through like a one-week phase of if you drove on the street and you drove past an orange cone, orange cone, um, Driver had to stop to 10 miles per hour, and then the passenger had to lean out the window and try to pick up the cone, the cone on the move. Very hard to do, even at 10 miles per hour. Those things are heavy. So that's another update. So we had an orange cone as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely had an orange cone. Why am I still searching for pictures of this? I should have stopped a while ago, but now I can't. We're kind of in it. And it's scary how many pictures there are available of my youth. No one told us Facebook was forever, which was fucked up. To be part of the society that guinea pigged MySpace and Facebook, just dumb. Shouldn't have been allowed. Not cool. What the hell am I doing? Uh, okay, there's a picture of me. It's a picture of my garage. Picture of the hot dog truck. 
nothing. Okay. This was not worth it. Bye. Orange is one syllable. Ah, oh, that depends where you live. That's the one word every time I say it, people are going to be like, orange is one syllable. Orange. No, it's not. Kevin, I think you're wrong there. How do you say orange is one syllable? Orange syllables. Hey, Kevin. Eat bugs. It's two syllables. But every other part of the country says or, unge. But if you're from New Jersey, you say orange and A-R. And I can't, you know, I changed a lot of the way I talk because I move so much and people get pissy about accents. I'm not changing the way I say orange. Or tournament. Everyone in California, in the every, they say tournament. Tournament. Well, how you spell? How you say tour? It's not T U R N, a mint. It's T O U R, tournament, not tournament. So, I refuse to lose on those two pronunciations. A lot of other well, orange we say wrong, but I'm not going to change it. Tournament we say correctly. Everyone else says wrong. Boom. And that's all I have to say about that. Random baseball player of the today. Random baseball player of the day is Herm. Winning ham. The winningest ham. Ham contest winner. Shout out Trill. Uh, I moved from New Jersey to California, and it was so annoying when people were saying tournament. Yeah, they're wrong. California people are rarely wrong on their pronunciations of stuff. You spilled coffee all over yourself? Jake spilled coffee all over his coal jersey. Uh, bye, Jill. Is Jill leaving? I can't tell any difference between the way I say water and the way everyone else says water. Water, okay? If you're in Boston, you say water with an H. If you're from New Jersey, you say water with a R. If you're from Philly, you say water with two O's. Boom. Accents. Uh, Herm Winningham was a baseball player. And he was a backup baseball player. And what did I write about him? His middle name is Son, which I found interesting. Herm Son Winningham, which I don't know. Imagine if his sister's middle name was Daughter. Harriet Daughter Winningham. That'd be hilarious. Need to know. I don't even know if he has a sister. At one time, a highly regarded prospect in the New York Mets chain. He was part of the Gary Carter trade, along with Hubie Brooks, Floyd Humans, and Mike Fitzgerald. Winningham was a member of the Cincinnati Reds team that defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 1990 National League Championship Series and then beat the Oakland Athletics in the 1990 World Series. In the last game of the World Series, he replaced an injured Billy Hatcher, went 2-3, for three, and scored the winning run. During the postseason in 1990, he batted 364. That's pretty cool. Let's go to that game. Uh, so he, World Series game four, it was a sweep. He's not the starter. Um, let me pull it up. They win two to one. He's not starting. Uh, Barry Larkin, Billy Hatcher, Herm Winningham, so he replaced Billy. Paul O'Neill. <laughs> Eric Davis, Glenn Braggs, Hal Morris, Chris Sabo, Todd Benzinger, Joe Oliver, Mariano Duncan. Uh, no nicknames. Ricky, Willie, Dave, Harold. Harold Baines, Willie McGee, Ricky Henderson, Conseco. Mark McGuire, Willie Randolph. Oh, I remember this game because I tweeted something out about it. Uh, I tweeted out like Paul O'Neill, O'Neill, 
uh, Randolph from Jamboy. Okay. Maybe I didn't use the apostrophe. Yeah, look. I have found it. We tweeted out because we watched this game. Wow, Inception, a video. Oh, 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 coming in hot. That's me. It is a one -one game on the Jake, what Richard. my mind is being a little bit blown about right. is that it's me, Tom. Willie deeper, deeper right. and Paul are yeah. two different decades in my brain. Right. And they played against each other. This is young Paul and old Willie. Will. I know I just never game two, as we said earlier, I never knew they crossed paths. And, I mean, O'Neal. Okay, so all of those thoughts I just said, I echoed them again, seeing them in the same game. All right, so let's see. When did our dude come in? Uh, Billy got hurt. Uh, what's his name? Herm? When did? All right, Herm Winningham replaces Billy Hatcher, playing center field and batting second after in between the second inning. So then in Herb's first at Herm's first at bat, he grounds out to the first baseman. 0 for 1. But he's called coming off the bench. In the sixth inning, he singles off Dave Stewart, which moves Lark into third base. That could have been huge because they, they were down one run. Now he moves the tying run to third base, Herm Winningham. Uh, but then it goes pop out, walk, double play. Dave Stewart gets out of it. He comes up again in the eighth inning. Now his team is down. By one run, and he singled to the catcher on a bunt. All right, interesting. We definitely watched this. What World Series was this? John Boy watching baseball, 1990 World Series. Uh, I wonder what mine and Jake's reaction to this was. Leadoff double in the seventh by Sable was wasted. What's Dave Stewart, not a Hall of Famer. One-time All-Star. So, this broadcast opened up. Nice pitch. Ball one, the third baseman. Where's the bunt right by Herm? Now. I think it's like a weird area, but... Oh, He's hit for roped it. For the right side. Is this Herm? Yeah. Okay, here's his bunt. Most oh, obvious. Oh, uh, foul, foul ball. The, uh, may not have Hatcher. Inception, huh? Video of me watching a video of me. You guys are watching me. Watch me. Watch Herm. Oh, oh. Same reaction I had then. At least I'm consistent. My knowledge of Jack Buck's broadcasting is already laying on the Joe Buck show. That's good knowledge. Yeah. That counts. Kind of. Oh, we're, all, we're officially going to allow it. Yep. Saw you play, Lou. Didn't we see him two years ago when he was young? <laughs> I don't think it was two years there ago. There it is. The no, that was Lou Pinella. First and no. When, when I said his nose looked like Okay. Shot. Went to see my reaction to the play. Didn't even react because I was talking about Pinella's nose. So it's a bunt. So bunt base hit. It's cool. It's not like, you know, he had two hits and they were both awesome. But that did help them win the win the game, which helped them win the World Series. They're up 3 nothing, so they're going to win the World Series anyway. Good job, Herm Winningham. Good job. Good job. Let's see his stats against Hall of Famers. He was uh, uh, like a career backup. Most games he ever played, 1987 uh, versus pitcher. Oh, oh, got to move, got to move, got to move. Versus pitcher, versus pitcher. Pitcher status, per pitcher status, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer. 929, 929. Okay. 417 on base percentage against Greg Maddox in 36 plate appearances. Eight walks, seven hits. Way to go, Herm. Nolan Ryan, 400 on base percentage, 294 batting average in 20 plate appearances. Three walks, five hits. Way to go, Herm. Uh, Lee Smith, Eckersley, and Smoltz kind of all. Got him. Two for six against Gossage. Maddox is his best. Lee Smith owned him. Bummer. 
whenever there's which pitcher did he crush the most? He had the most hits off of Kevin Gross. You gross. We need to see what Kevin Gross looked like. Was he gross? Oh, Kevin Gross still out? Okay. We have two different versions of him here. We have like a... I mean, is this... What a... What a chameleon. Kevin Kevin Gross goes to Texas. He has a mullet, a goatee, and he looks like this. Kevin Gross to... Kevin Gross goes to L.A., and he's got a mustache, a gold chain, and sunglasses. Who are you, Kevin Gross? Just a chameleon? You got to stick to who you are. You can't just adapt to whatever. <sighs> Look at him in the Phillies. It's kind of an awesome baseball card. That's a real nice baseball card. Whoever, like, printed that did him dirty. Teeth, you know, he didn't grow up in the braces generation, I guess. Anyway. Uh, and that's all I have to say about that. Random book of the day today is Generation Kill. Generation Kill. You know, a lot of people, I've talked about how much I love Band of Brothers. Now I think it's the best thing to ever be put on movies or cinema or anything at all. Generation Kill a lot of people say, oh, do you like Band of Brothers or do you like the Pacific more? Which is a dumb question because if you no one likes the Pacific more than Band of Brothers. Only contrarians and people um, who want to be contrarian like say that. Maybe Mad Dog Russo would say that. Generation Kill is the next best thing. If you love Band of Brothers, Generation Kill is the next best thing. It's about, you know, it's about... What what is it? What's the company are they called? I don't want to get it wrong. A um a Rolling Stone reporter traveled with the Marines of the First Recon Battalion, the first generation dispatched into open ended combat since Vietnam. A new breed of warrior, unrecognizable to their forebears. Soldiers raised on hip hop, internet porn, and video games. A des a dis yeah. Anyway. It follows the same the same recon group throughout the uh, uh, early stages of uh, what they call Operation Iraq something. What's the bullshit name they gave that war? What's the game the name they gave it? Uh, op- oper- Operation Freedom, some shit like that. Anyway, I, I watched the show first. And it took me a little bit to get into it. But then once I realized it was Band of Brothers and you're following the same group the whole way through, I was like, oh, I can really get into this. Then I read the book. And I love when that happens, when you watch the show and it's a real, it's based on real life. And then you read the book and you come across scenes that were in the show that you thought maybe they fictionalized. And you're like, oh, shit. All of that really happened? That guy's real? Iraqi Freedom. Yeah. Operation Enduring Freedom. Iraqi. Yeah, whatever. Um so I love when that happens. So if you if you if you love Band of Brothers and you love war miniseries, I would I would give Generation Kill a go. The final scene is really good. Um, the camaraderie is really good. They have they have some some leaders, uh, kind of like uh, you know Lieutenant Winters esque esque. Um, there's two leaders. There's Iceman, and then there's Nathaniel Fick. Nathaniel Fick is a pretty cool dude. Um, and the guy who plays him plays him really well in it as well. So I'm a big fan of it. Check it out if you want. We love you, Fruity Rudy. Fruity Rudy played himself. Uh, he played himself. So that's cool. Uh, all right. Got to pass it off to Wake and Jake now. Thanks for hanging out with me. Appreciate you tuning in. That was fun. And what did we what did we do today? Sturgill Simpson sang to us. Maybe Mission got their sign stealing and sign stealing in uh, youths in general. Herm Winningham had a nice bunt. Generation Kills a good book and good miniseries on HBO. Go check it out. My fiance 
is in between the ages 17 and 57, and it's her birthday today. And that about sums up the show and the program. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Love you. Goodbye. Tell me how you make illegal Something that we all make in our brain Some say you might go crazy Then again it might make you go insane Every time I take a look Inside that old and fabled book I'm blinded and reminded of Thing goes by some old man in the sky